Very excited now to be joined by Cowboys star receiver C.D. Lamb. C.D., what's going on, man? How you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Uh, no complaints here, man. Uh, look, you guys are coming off a huge win uh, on Sunday Night Football against the Indianapolis Colts. It really feels like right now the Dallas Cowboys are clicking at the right time. Everything is coming together. Um, I know there's a long way to go for you guys. you got bigger aspirations in beating the Colts uh, in Week 13. But talk to me about the vibe around the Cowboys right now. As Like I said, I feel like everything is sort of clicking at the right time. Most definitely. Um, the camaraderie we built, uh, you know, throughout training camp, I feel like that's where it all started. And uh, just coming together just as, you know, as a team, playing together, uh, uh, playing complimentary football, all three phases, you know, just trying to be the best at each position and win each uh, individual one-on-one, if you will. Yeah, for sure. And I feel like Dak is playing at a really high level. You've got Zeke and Tony Pollard balling out right now. Um Tell me a little bit about the offense this year, because I think, you know, maybe it's maybe I'm wrong about this, but I feel like you guys have evolved a little bit from what you guys have been the last couple of years. Feels like you're doing some easier things like with some creative screen passes. You particularly, um, I think this goes understated about you so far in the NFL CD. You've played like multiple wide receiver spots. You've been out at X sometimes. You've been used as a flanker. But I got to say, the way that they used you, on Sunday night, you know, a lot of pre-snap motion using you to kind of dictate matchups to the defense. I think that goes understated about your game. How do you prepare like to play multiple spots like that from the receiver standpoint? Uh, quite honestly, it's very difficult. I'm not even yeah. <laughs> gonna you know, just sugarcoat it, but uh, for sure, just you know, it's fun. It's it's probably what brings the fun into the you know position. Just learning the different routes, uh, it's different route trees at every position. Right. Uh, obviously, you know, there's three positions on the field as, at the receiver position, but each every one has its own limitations on which route you run. So just kind of opening that up, expanding, you know, my knowledge as, you know, learning the offense, if you will. And uh, overall, and like you said, just kind of getting myself lined up. But we, we want the winning matchup when the matchup is in our favor. So uh, just, you know, overall, just being in an attack mindset, understanding us as the offense, we can be very lethal. And uh, just being, you know, understanding that we got different playmakers and difference makers on the field all at once. So you got to keep your eyes, you know, active or else. I'm glad you didn't sugarcoat it because I think sometimes, you know, it's it's easy to just pick. Hey, I just go out there and do my job. Right. Like, but man, it is difficult to make that transition right. from the outside to the slot. So I'm glad you didn't sugarcoat that for the people out there, because I think that again, I think that goes understated. If you have a preference and again, I know you might say I'm, I'm going to do my job, whatever. If you have a preference, like. Which wide receiver position, which type of assignments like gets you the most jazzed up on a Sunday? Slot, for sure. Yeah. Um, especially in this position. I mean, in this offense, like the slot has the most difficult of the three. Um, just understanding like you have, you know, you're blocking the most dangerous, if you will, like between the safety and the nickel. Mm -hmm. And then you're already in the middle of the defense, you know, so you can kind of see from a quarterback's point of view, kind of, on the slightest, sure. that's the closest you can get at the receiver position is the slot. And then kind of see the whole, you know, formation just evolve or open up, if you will. But, uh, yeah, I, I like the slot for sure. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Uh, I love the chemistry and timing you and Dak have built uh, while playing in that slot position. It's really cool to see. And I think, again, shout out to you, man, because that's tough. Like, not every receiver gets to, you know, play multiple positions like that. So shout out to you, man. It's been awesome to watch. Hey, you're here on behalf of the Snickers Rookie of the year, Rookie Mistake of the Year program. Tell me a little bit about that. Most definitely. I'm excited to partner with Snickers for this year's Snicker Rookie Mistake of the Year. Um, you know, at the end of the regular season, one mistake uh, will be crowned by Snickers rookie mistake at the end of the year, with the fan winning two tickets to the Arizona, I mean, um, to Arizona Super Bowl Fifty Seven. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, every now and then I'll react to a couple of mistakes that you know fans have shared. And uh, you can find it on my Instagram page, or you can kind of find it, you know, on a Snickers YouTube channel. And uh, to submit your rookie mistake if you want um, and learn more, fans can you know head to snickerscom slash rookie mistake. And then submit yours, and then maybe, you know, we can kind of get a, a gauge or I'll see what your rookie mistake is, and we can kind of go off that. Well, for the people out there, uh, you know, we had we have Austin Eckler on the podcast every week. Uh, he unfortunately couldn't make it to this interview today, but 
you know, he's shared some of his mistakes he made it as a rookie. We had Debo Samuel on. He shared a, a rookie mistake. Do you have any stories from your rookie year where you made that that rookie year mistake that was you were able to kind of laugh off later? Most definitely. Uh, my rookie mistake was actually um, my rookie year, of course. Um, first game ever in the NFL. It was it was an away game. We were going against the Rams. Um, you know, every rookie is told to bring, you know, some food for the room for the travel mm-hmm. guy. And my job was to bring food for the receivers. And, yeah, so they kind of told me to bring their food kind of late. You know what I'm saying? So when they everyone had their order in, whatever, whatever, I called in. As I'm as I'm doing all this, I'm, mind you, I'm rushing because I live mm-hmm. about 45 minutes away from the airport. Um, get to the food space. It's an extended wait line for the pickup, but my food was ready, so. I'm rushing. I'm like, can I get my food? Everyone's getting mad at me because I'm like skipping a line or whatever. I'm, I'm so sorry, but I gotta go. I'm trying to, you know, go play this game. And then you got I, important things to be doing, man. You know. Unfortunately, <laughs> I had to wait in a line. Um, and then as that was happening, time was just kept ticking. And then by that time, I ended up late, and I almost missed the plane to my first NFL game. So it was quite the mistake. Very <laughs> frustrating. <laughs> uh, I could not imagine the, you know. Cowboys already get a lot of media attention anyways. I could not imagine the the discourse about that if it's like, oh, Crazy. headline, C.D. Lamb missed his first NFL game trying to pick Crazy. up, you know, some some food or whatever. Imagine, imagine the storyline on that. It would have been a crazy turn. Yeah, no doubt, man. Well, hey, uh, talked a lot about how the Cowboys are clicking at the right time. You go, you got Michael Gallup making sort of his full emergence back, a couple of touchdowns on Sunday night. But I would be remiss if I didn't ask you, you know, talk about Cowboys getting media attention. A lot of talk about Odo Beckham right now. You know, he, he's with a couple teammates at the Mavericks game. You know, obviously we know he's visiting the team. What are your thoughts on the possible addition of a guy like Odo Beckham to the team and to the wide receiver room? I love that for us. Uh, obviously, adding another weapon like him is just another threat to the end zone and then another person that the defense has to account for. So, off that, I want him. I'm accepting, you know, everything that comes with it. Yeah. I know he's ready for, you know, the attention of the Dallas Cowboys, if you will, coming from New York with the media and everything. So he kind of knows how to regulate and do all that. So like I said, I want him to join us. So yeah, we need that. Yeah. It would be pretty exciting. I mean, last year when he goes to the Rams, he sort of was a missing piece, like as that backside X receiver, which opens up so much then for Cooper Cup as that slot receiver. I think you could see some similar stuff there with you and him. And also, we know he's got experience playing the flanker position as well, running that route. I mean, the guy can really, as long as he's healthy, he can really do it all. So it would be, that'd be a hell of a trio. You, Michael Gallup, and him, that would be really fun to watch. Dallas Cowboys be putting up a lot of points. So that would be pretty exciting. Uh, Hopefully, we'll see what happens, though. We'll see what happens. I know. I know everybody's waiting to see it. Um, yo, last couple things here, CD, before we let you get out of here. This is a, a, a somewhat of a fantasy football podcast. You know, Austin and I talk uh, fantasy when he's on here. Uh, he's really into it. Do you have any experience playing fantasy? Do you have any experience like engaging with fantasy football players out there at all, or any crazy stories? Yeah, I have a, I have a fantasy team now. I just actually just started it this year. Oh, for I real? Just, That's good. Playing, just playing, like literally just draft. It's my family, a uh, couple of friends or whatever. Uh, so I ended up, I ended up, uh, my my brother, he drafted me before I could draft me. And I, I was like, you know what? <laughs> yeah, that's not, you know, that's not even a fair, you know, in my opinion, that's not fair. Yeah, come on, man. You're going to get me before I can get me. And he picked for me anyway. And he it was kind of like a petty situation. But uh <laughs> I had I had Jamar. So I was very you know I'm I'm content with it. You know what I'm saying? So right. and then he got mad that I took Jamar because he wanted me and Jamar. So I kind of had to make a little, you know, the trade going on. But other than that, it's nothing really crazy as far as the fantasy going on. Besides me dropping 38 and then I won for my fantasy team. That was crazy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on, man. Give me a break. We've had a few NFL players on the show, and it's like, you guys got to be, if you're going to play fantasy, you got to be at least able to to draft yourself, you know, because then, yeah, then it's like, okay, you're benefiting from your own greatness. It feels kind of, um, 
wrong in a way for somebody else in your right. league to go against you with you. I mean, imagine if you drop that 38 points on your own, like against you. Yeah, that would, that be-, would be tough. Exactly. That's <laughs> not, that's not, no, that's no, that's not, it doesn't even sound, you know, correct, you know? No, nah, yeah, for real. Well, I-, I think it's pretty cool to see guys like you embrace fantasy because, you know, we know that obviously the NFL is super popular on its own, but the the popularity of fantasy football, the the popularity of sports betting, daily fantasy stuff like that has really grown the league. So I think it's pretty cool to see guys like you and Austin and others uh, embracing it out there. For sure, most definitely. I mean, everyone, you know, you got to be a part of, you got to experience what's going on or like the craziness that you're hearing about every Sunday. So, you know, you want to get a good, little glimpse. And I mean, it's good to see, you know, you kind of keep a track of what's going on around you or like how people are performing throughout the NFL. Yeah, it, it's pretty cool. And I know that the the fans, like the fantasy players and stuff, love to hear you guys engaging with it. So that's pretty awesome. Any punishments for last place uh, in your league? We've had, a, I think we had Cam Jordan on earlier this year, and he had talked about the Waffle House punishment, you know, where you have to sit in the Waffle House for 24 hours and eat waffles oh, literally uh, all. Nah, you just gave me an idea, though, for sure. Uh, as far <laughs> as what is going to happen at the end of the because I think people kind of like people in my fantasy really just starting to give up now because obviously their team isn't as good as they thought it would be. So now we're trying to come up with a punishment and I'll be sure to enforce the rules. Yeah, check out the Waffle House Challenge, man. Uh, that is a pretty fun one. People, 24 uh, hours, imagine. That's tough. Some some crazy things go down in a Waffle House too. I mean, the Waffle House by the, the, the highway where I grew up, qu- questionable. Some, some questionable exactly. things. Going uh, you better hope you don't come in last. <laughs> exactly right. It's the motivation there. Hey, well, hey, CD Lamb, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, this was awesome. Got to talk about a lot of different stuff between all the way from wide receiver positions to Waffle House to Snickers right. rookie of the rookie mistake of the year. That's a pretty wide ranging conversation, man. Thanks for joining me. Good luck and stay healthy the rest of the year, man. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me.